All right, so here we're just going to review evaluating expressions and order of operations. So here we go. Quick question. When you make cereal, do you fill the bowl with milk or cereal first? So this one is a little bit on the controversial side. Uh, some people think there is a difference that when you pour in the milk after the cereal, somehow it changes the molecular composition of the flakes or the oats uh, before stirring. But you, you could also argue that when you put in three quarters of a cup of cereal and a half a cup of milk and then stir, you end up with the same result. How about this one? When you get dressed, do you put your shoes on or your socks on first? So this one here I think is a little bit more of an obvious answer. Uh, if you put shoes and then socks on, you will end up with a different result than doing it in the other order. So here we are again going to be talking about order of operations. So in math, we need to do things in a certain order to make sure they get them right. And that's where our order of operations come into play. And quick example here, sign the check. The phrase sign the check is different than the phrase check the sign because we did change the order of the words. Before we get into it, let's look at some vocabulary here. Numerical expressions. We got numbers and we have operations, some examples there. And when we simplify a numerical expression, we are finding its value. So we do want to be using order of operations so that way we get the correct answer and to make sure everybody gets the same correct answer. Quick illustration here of why we use order of operations. Let's look at this numerical expression. They're both the same. We're going to work left to right over here. So 2 plus 8 makes 10. We still have the times 6 and the divide by 2 squared. Now left to right, 10 times 6 makes 60. We still have the divide, the 2 squared. 60 divided by 2 makes 30. And then we have the squared makes 900 for the 30 squared. So this left to right is the wrong way of doing it. Do not do it this way. We're going to be using order of operations here. So in this case here, we start out with the exponents. We're going to change the 2 squared to a 4. Now we're going to do multiply and divide from left to right. So the 2 plus is going to stay there. We have an 8 times 6 makes 48 going from left to right. And then the division here, 48 divided by 4 makes a 12. And last, we're going to end with addition or subtraction. In this case, 2 plus 12 makes 14. So this is the correct way of doing it here. And an acronym that's commonly used for remembering order of operations is PEMDAS. So P-E-M-D-A-S. So let's take these step by step. We start out with the parentheses. Now, we can also think of this as grouping symbols might be a better way of thinking about it. We do have the parentheses there, but we also have brackets. Those count as grouping symbols. And even the fraction bar is a grouping symbol. So basically with the fraction bars, we do what's on the top or numerator and we do what's on the bottom or denominator. And then last, we would do that division step here. So after we have all the grouping symbols done, next up is exponents. And this does include square roots. The reason why is not covered in this video though. Next, we're going to do multiply and divide. So these are in one step, not separate steps. And we're going to do these from left to right. And then last, we'll finish up with addition and subtraction. Again, this is one step addition subtraction and it's from left to right. All right, so let's get into it. First up, we're going to evaluate 4x squared minus 3x plus 1 for when x equals negative 2. Now, when we say evaluate, we're going to replace the variable with what it's equal to, its value, negative 2 in this case here, and then we simplify, and then we do order of operations. So we're going to replace the x's with negative 2. So 4x squared becomes 4 negative 2 squared minus 3x becomes 3 times negative 2. Now we do order of operations. So first up, exponents. There's no grouping symbols here. So in this case here, these parentheses here are talking about multiplication. They're not grouping symbol parentheses. So here we go. 
four times, and then we do the exponents. Negative two squared is negative two times negative two. Negative times negative is positive. Two times two is four. And then we keep the rest there. Minus three times negative two, and then we still have the plus one there. So after we've done the parentheses, the exponents, next up is multiplication and division. So here we go, multiplication, we're gonna have a four times four is gonna make 16. And here we have another multiplication here. We're gonna think of this as negative three times negative two. So negative times negative is positive. And then three times two is going to make six. And then we still have the plus one. So here we go, now we have addition or subtraction last and we just work from left to right. So 16 plus six is gonna make 22 plus one is gonna make 23. Let's evaluate b squared minus 4ac for when a equals negative five, b equals negative two, and c equals negative three. So we're just gonna replace the b, the a, and the c with what they're equal to. So here we go. So the first one that we're gonna have is b squared. So the b is gonna go here and that's the, the negative two, so that goes there. And then we have the a is gonna be for this blank here and that's a negative five. And then last up is a c that goes there and that one's gonna be negative three. So now we're ready to do order of operations. So in this case here, because PEMDAS, the P stands for parentheses, it's actually grouping symbols. So these parentheses here are actually multiplication parentheses. They're not grouping symbol parentheses. So P is done, now E for exponents. So here's an exponent here. We're gonna do negative two squared. So negative two times itself, negative times negative is positive, And then two times two is four right there. Now, next up, now that we have exponents all done, these are gonna be multiplication. So we have a negative four times a negative five times a negative three. So when we're doing the positives and negatives, it does help to do the positive or negative part first. So negative times negative is positive, times another negative makes negative. And now we do four times five times three. So four times five, that's gonna make 20. And then times three makes 60. So we've done the exponents, we've done the multiplication. Next up is add subtract. There's just a subtract here. So we're doing uh, four minus 60. So we have more negatives than we do positives. And again, if you're thinking money, just think you have $4, you have to pay 60. So you don't have enough to pay. So your answer is going to be negative. And then to find out how much you still have remaining to pay, that's going to be 60 minus four, which makes 56. We're gonna evaluate negative b minus square root d all over 2a. So, and this is gonna be for when a equals five, b is negative eight, and d is 16. So here we go. We're gonna replace these variables with what they're equal to. That's what evaluate means. So we have negative b comes first, and the b is negative eight, so that's gonna go there. And then the minus square root d, so d is 16, so that's gonna go underneath the square root right there. And last we have two times a. Two times a is gonna go here, and a is a five. So now that we've replaced the variables with what they're equal to, now it's time to do order of operation. So for parentheses or grouping symbols, our fraction bar here is a grouping symbol. So we do need to clean up or simplify the numerator and the denominator first, and then last we'll do the division step. So these parentheses here are not grouping symbol parentheses, they are multiplication parentheses. Okay, so for parentheses on the top, we're gonna go ahead and do the exponents and square roots do count as an exponent. So square root of 16 makes four. And then we also have, so there we go. So there's the four there. That's gonna replace the square root of 16 for our exponent. And then for multiplication, this negative negative eight counts as a multiplication step. So negative negative eight is positive eight. And then two times five makes 10. So again, the Fraction bar is a grouping symbol, so we need to do the eight minus four next, because we're still simplifying the numerator and denominator. So eight minus four is four, and then over 10. And for this one here, we can reduce. So we, we can, they're both even, so we can divide them both by two or remove a factor of two from both. So four divided by two, and then 10 divided by two there.
So we're gonna evaluate the absolute value, these straight up and down lines, these vertical lines, that's absolute value of 2x minus 3y, where x is negative five and y is four. So evaluate means we're gonna replace the variables with what they're equal to. So in this case here, that's gonna be a 2x, 2x, so x is gonna go there, negative five, and then 3y, three times y, the four is gonna go there for the y. So remember with our order of operations, PEMDAS, uh, the P stands for grouping symbols, which the absolute value symbols does count as grouping symbols. We don't have any exponents. And then these parentheses here are not grouping symbol, they're multiplication symbols. So we can do absolute value of, and then two times negative five, we have a positive times a negative makes negative, and then two times five makes 10, and then minus, and you can think of this as negative three times four, Either way, it's gonna be negative or minus, and then three times four makes 12. So next up, inside our absolute value, we do addition subtraction next, because we're done with multiplication. There's no exponents. We're done with multiplication. So now we do 10, negative 10 minus 12. So we have a negative minus uh, another number there. So think money. You have to pay 10, and you have to pay 12. So the grand total of how much you have to pay is $22. And then the absolute value of negative 22 equals positive 22. Now, some people get confused with these absolute values. So we'll just go over this again. It's not opposites. The absolute value of five is positive five. The absolute value of negative five is positive five. So whatever comes out of the absolute value is always going to be positive. You're not always switching signs. And the formal definition for absolute value is how far is it from zero? So how far is five from zero? It's five away. How far is negative five from zero? It's five away also. Here we're going to simplify three plus nine times a quantity seven minus five. This one is tricky and a lot of students mess up on it. Middle school, high school, even college students mess up on this one. So we wanna make sure that you guys watching this video don't make that same mistake. Okay, so remember, uh, we do parentheses and then exponents, then multiplication, division, then addition, subtraction. So parentheses first. Parentheses here, that's gonna be the seven minus five and that's gonna make two. Seven minus five makes two. So that's all we're gonna change there. Next up is multiplication. Now, a lot of people wanna do three plus nine. Do not do that. Multiplication is next. And that's gonna be nine times two makes 18 there. Last, we do addition subtraction. So three plus 18 makes 21, and that's the correct way of doing this. Again, a lot of students see this three plus nine out front and they wanna add that first, don't do that. Okay, now let's go ahead and have you try this viral math problem. Pause the video, try it out if you want, and see if you can get the right answer. Okay, so the correct answer to this is nine. And when we go through and do this, remember parentheses first. So that's gonna be the one plus two makes three. And then we do multiplication division from left to right. So we would go six divided by two makes three times three to make nine. So remember when we're doing these uh, order of operation questions, this parentheses, that is grouping symbols, then exponents, then multiplication division from left to right, as we saw in that last example, and then addition, subtraction at the very end. So this PEMDAS, it is four steps. It is not six steps. It's not multiplication, then division. It's multiplication, division all at once.